should everything should be set up correctly. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about melody and rhythm, and uh, Francis, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about melody and rhythm. These are two. These are kind of the two most basic components of creating music, of uh, creating um, a composition um, or writing music, and uh, they're in some ways very simple, in some ways very very complex. And we're just going to kind of talk about a couple of the basic components of how they work, and then see how that will affect how we uh, write our sequencer in our um, in our JavaScript sketch. Um, so let's talk about uh, rhythm first, and we'll look at some music and uh, maybe play some simple uh, songs. So um, when we're talking about rhythm, uh, let's talk. Let's get a really simple song that we can look at. Um, let's get uh, "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," which is also you know, the alphabet song and look at some sheet music and talk about what we're looking at. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a good one. Let's look at this image. And uh, I guess we also need like a um, MIDI piano web-based. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is cute. Okay, so we have a little piano here. And so if we look at Twinkle Twinkle, um, it's a pretty simple song. Um, let's see if I can play it. Uh, Uh, where does it go after? Da, 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 da. Oh, it goes up. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You know, it's very it's very uh, simplistic and straightforward, but it shows us a lot of uh, a couple important things about uh, both rhythm and melody. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the the rhythm first. So typically, when we're writing music, uh, we have these things called measures, um, and a measure usually uh, looks like this. Oh, this is doing something annoying. Um, Let's get rid of that. OK, so a measure looks like this. And usually there's some lines that show us which notes are being played. But if we're just thinking about the melody or the rhythm first, we can just use uh, the uh, some simple notes. We don't need lines. So typically, um, a uh, composition starts with what's called a time signature. So for Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star, it's 4 over 4. And what that means is if this whole thing is one measure, that means there are four uh, quarter notes in this measure. So the number of notes and the duration of the note. And a quarter note is going to look like this. It's going to have a note and a line. Uh, and so if there's four quarter notes, they are going to have one note with a line, another note with a line, another note with a line, and then another note with a line. We're going to divide this measure into quarters. So there's four uh, total notes. Um, so that's a quarter note, and it just has one line. You can see Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is just a bunch of quarter notes. Um, so the rhythm is very straightforward. The only rhythmic change, uh, it goes uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The only rhythmic change is at the end of each phrase. And it's always the same. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then a pause. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then a pause. And it stays the same. So it's repeating this pattern. And it's only varying the rhythm right here uh, just to kind of signify that's the end of one passage. So that's one thing that rhythm can do for us. It can kind of signify groups of a melody. Um, and so that's what it does in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And there's no variation on this rhythm, even though there are variations on the melody. 
Uh, so we'll see another example where there's uh, variations on both, but that's a pretty typical way to start with a very simple uh, composition is to have a very easily repeated uh, rhythm so that you can identify the the sort of different components of the melody. So there's like one, there's four total sections and they all end on a, a quarter note or sorry, a, a, a half note. So typically we have quarter notes. We also have um, a whole note, which is a whole measure. That's usually just a circle with no line. So that's going to last for this entire measure. And then we have a half note, which is a circle that's not filled in with a line. Uh, and this doesn't matter that much because we're not going to actually write sheet music, but it's it's a good way to kind of think about these things. Um, and then we also have uh, uh, eighth notes. So eighth notes are uh, usually have one line in between. And that's what we see with twinkle, uh, or no, not twinkle, twinkle, little star. Those are quarter notes. You can write a single eighth note. It's yes. Just... That's true. Just, uh, it's kind, uh, of, kind of a tail at the top. Right. So you can have quarter notes like this. Um, but yeah, that brings up the case of rests. Um, so let's do a couple of those in a second. So there's another quarter note. This looks pretty bad over here. I, I made more space than I really need uh, for my measure. Um, so those are kind of, there's more, you know, there's more than a whole note. There's more than, there's also like triplets and dotted notes and stuff like that, but we're not going to get too deep into it right now. So we have a court, uh, we have a whole note, which in, in tone is written one N. We have a half note, which is written two N. We have a quarter note, which is written four N. And then we have an eighth note, which is written eight N. And so this keeps going. We have 16th and 30 seconds and 64 notes. And you can play with those in your own compositions. But I'm just going to stick with this as kind of my set of notes that I'm going to work with. And so when we're working specifically uh, with Tone.js and with the loop, we actually kind of are not worrying so much about this over here, the time signature, how many notes there are in a measure, because Tone.js isn't actually paying attention to that. It doesn't really care. We have to do that ourselves. Um, so we don't have to think as much about the time signature. What we have to think about instead is what the loop is actually doing and how to write music around that. So with our loop, depending on which duration we choose, so on Monday, we ended up with an eighth note loop. That means it's going to play something. It's going to do something at every eighth note in our measure. Um, I have too much space here. I'm just going to, let's just start a new section down here. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so tone is going to do something. The loop is going to do something at each one of these beats. And if we just want to play a note, we can just put a note there and it'll just play it. But if we want rhythm, if we want something that sounds like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or another song, that's when we have to add in uh, rests. And that's kind of what Gal is referring to. If I want, let's say I want an eighth note followed by a pause. I could have an eighth note like this that doesn't connect. And then I would have like a little rest here. I forget which symbol is the eighth note rest, but it's something like that. And then I could go to another eighth note or I could do, let's say I wanted to do a quarter note here. I would have a quarter note. And that means the note is gonna play through this next beat. But because of the way that uh, tone works, it doesn't really know what this note is when we get to the next loop. So we still actually are going to have to say, you know, don't play a note here. And so that's what we're going to look at how to do here. So the duration, uh, the length of the note versus how much where it goes in our measure are a little bit different in tone than how you would normally think about it in music. So if we play an eighth note followed by a rest, and then a quarter note uh, followed by a rest. This note will play longer. It'll play across this, these two eighth notes, but um, we still need to tell tone not to play anything here. And we'll see an example of that when we get over there. Um, likewise, if I play a half note here, so if I had a filled in half note, this is actually gonna take up this whole section, but tone doesn't know that, so we have to, put in a bunch of rests here that say don't play notes here. So that's how we have to deal with our rhythm. Our rhythm is a good way of marking uh, like groups of a melody. 
And it can also do other things, add complexity to a melody um, that uh, you know doesn't isn't achieved just with the sequence of notes. So that's one aspect of what we're going to look at today. The other aspect is melody. Um, this will actually, we'll talk a bit more about this next week when we talk a little bit about harmony and chords and things like that. But what we'll see here is that a melody is really just a sequence and usually there's some type of repetition. So with Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star, uh, there's very obvious repetition of this theme with a couple variations. Um, so the first time we play it through, it's just, uh, let's go over here. So that's the whole melody. And then it repeats the, the last half of that melody. Notice that this part gets repeated here, but it's moved up one note. Notice that every one of these notes uh, through here is actually moved up one. So the first time I play it, it's... Uh, and the second time I play it, it just goes up by one note. So it sounds similar, but there's a difference. So that's what creates a melody is by repeating a pattern, by, but adding a variation. So the first part of the melody is uh, bu, bu. And then the second part is And then the last bit uh, takes us back to the beginning. Uh, where is it? So we repeat this one, and then we go back to the beginning, so each of these distinct parts stands out, but it creates this sequence that, you know, since we've heard this song a million times, we're very familiar with. Um, so let's quickly look at another simple example, the Happy Birthday song. Uh, and so you'll see this one is actually a little bit more complex, uh, but uh, it uses all of the same basic uh, concepts. Um, so let's find a simple version of Happy Birthday. So there's a little bit more happening in here rhythmically namely the dotted um, quarter note here, or eighth note here. And this is in a different uh, time signature. It's in three over four. So there's three quarter notes uh, per measure. Um, but we don't really need to worry about that again with tone because whatever order we put the notes in is just what it's going to play at. So we, we just have to do that programmatically. Um, but in Happy Birthday, we can see there's a similar repetition and variation of the theme. So the first playthrough, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this with both of these tabs, but the first playthrough in Happy Birthday sounds like this. OK, and then the second playthrough just sounds like this. OK, so they're pretty similar, but there's a difference in these two notes here and where it ends up. And the first time it ends up on um, the G note, which in the scale is, uh, well, actually, that's getting a little, little too complicated for what we're talking about. So we're just repeating stuff, but then making some simple variations. So it does two variations. And then in the third playthrough, it jumps up. It goes, uh... oh, wait. So it jumps up and then kind of slowly goes back down to somewhere where we're familiar with. And then it plays a really interesting variation of the original melody, where instead of going um, up the scale, it actually goes down the scale, but it has a similar feel to it. So this last little bit um, sounds like, where's the B? So it sounds like this, but it goes the opposite direction. OK, so there's that's kind of generally, like there's no real rules for how to write melodies and rhythms and stuff like that. But those are a couple things to kind of keep in mind, is that we have repetition, we repeat phrases, and then we have variation. We make v changes to those phrases as we repeat them. 
Um, so let's keep those principles in mind as we switch over to Replit and uh, change the way that we're playing the chords so that we can introduce rhythm and we can start to think about uh, creating, writing new melodies. Um, so I'm gonna go to my Replit page and here's my tone sequencer project from last time. Uh, I'm actually gonna fork this. So let's go back. Um, I guess I can just fork it from here. Uh, so I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna fork this to make a new version of it. And so I'm just gonna call this tone sequencer two. We're still doing sequencing, but now we're actually gonna change the rhythm as well. So I'm gonna click fork here. Um, and let's go to the settings and increase the font size. And hopefully Replit will uh, work okay. It seems to be loading a little bit slowly. Um, let's see if I type in script.js up here, if it'll go for me. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's close this up and squish this over here a little bit. And so we have tone sequencer ex example two. And I'll put a link to this in the um, channel chat. Okay, so uh, we're gonna change a few things here as we kind of make our, uh, our, our sequencer a little bit more interesting. Um, so right now, let's take a look at the code. So uh, we're generating a sequence. I'm gonna get rid of that for now um, so we can do stuff on purpose, but we can bring it back later. Um, so right now I'm adding random notes to the sequence. Uh, I'm just gonna comment this out for now and I'm gonna write my sequence up here for a bit. So uh, we had a simple sequence. Um, we could do something uh, similar to uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Happy Birthday. So let's just do a really simple sequence. Uh, we'll do C4 followed by C4 or let's do, uh, let's do E, let's go up to the uh, third. I'm just gonna do a few notes here. Oh, it's kind of running slow, but um, that's okay. So we'll do C4 followed by E4 followed by two D4s. Okay, so this will create something kind of repetitive, um, not super interesting, but we'll have something that we can uh, repeat. So I'm gonna run this. And let's take a listen. So uh, with this sequence, uh, it doesn't have the same kind of feeling as these other melodies, in part because there's no variation in the rhythm. The notes just keep playing and playing and playing. And so there's no sense of when a phrase stops. So in tone, we can actually pretty easily introduce uh, something like a rest. Um, by just having a value that, you know, doesn't exist. And in JavaScript, the easiest way to uh, kind of signify this is with a null value. You could also write like, you know, if you wanted to write something like rest here, you could do that as well. But it's kind of easy just to use a null value here. And I'll show you why. We can just say if the value doesn't exist, then don't play a note. And so the loop will keep going and it'll keep counting in the sequence, but it won't play a note. Um, so let's close our setup function and go to our loop. And so here we're getting a note from our sequence. So we're saying our note equals the sequence at the index. So as we count through our sequence, we're gonna count each one of these notes. And we, when we get to this index here, there's no note here, there's just a null value. So we can ask if there's a note, and then if there's not a note, then we won't play. Um, so we can just add an extra line of code in here, if note. And then if there is a note, we wanna change our display note so we know which note we're playing. And we wanna play our synth. Um, and then we're gonna stop there because even if there's not a note, we still need to keep counting through our sequence 
so we can count our rest. And so basically what we're doing here is similar to what we just drew. We're playing a note here, and then here we're still counting with um, tone, but we don't want to play a note, so we're just going to do a rest there. Um, and so now we're going to be in a weird key signature, but let's just listen, or uh, time signature, but let's just listen to the difference. <laughs> So now we have a sense of uh, a phrase and it, you know, a little pause at the end. And you can introduce uh, uh, rests anywhere in our melody. It doesn't have to be at the end. For example, I could put one after the first note. And so you start to get more of a sense of a melody, of an idea. We could put a null in between our two D notes to separate those out a little bit. So that's starting to sound a little bit more uh, like music. Um, so next, we're going to actually change the duration of our notes a little bit. So we have to make our sequence a little bit more complicated, because right now, Every time we play a note, it's always an eighth note. That's hard coded in here. And so if we want to play different durations of notes, we're going to have to include this in our sequence data, which means our sequence data is going to have to be a little bit more complicated. Um, so that's what we'll do next. Any, uh, any questions before I move on to that? Is the null always going to be the same length of the note? Um, sorry. What... If I, the null. You know, the rest, can I make a rest of like a whole bar, but have all the other notes in eighth notes? Yeah, or that's... the rest has to be uh, the same length of the notes? So that's what I'm going to talk about now. Um, if we want to add, uh, yeah, if we want to do like a, a rest for multiple notes, then we have to do multiple rests because of the way that the loop works. So that's what we'll do now. We'll add in different durations for our different notes. Um, so uh, yeah, let's go back. So as I mentioned over here, um, every one of these notes is going to be an eighth note. Uh, so tone is playing on each one of these things. If we want this to be an eighth note, this note here, then we need to follow it with an eighth note rest. If we want this to be a quarter note, we still need to follow it with an eighth note rest because tone is still going to try to play something here. So even though we're going to rest here, it doesn't know that our previous note is a quarter note. So we still have to add a rest in here. Um, if you write it in quarter notes instead of eighth notes, you won't have to put those rests, will you? You still would, because you'd end up, so if I had just quarter notes, let's say I had a measure that was four quarter notes, like this. Mm -hmm. And the first note I played, let's say it was a half note. OK, so it's just a filled in note. So it's a half note. So I still need to do a rest here, because this note will play the whole time. But I need a quarter note rest in order to not have tone do anything here. Yeah, if it's, if you write it in, in quarter notes and you do a half note, but if you write quarter notes, then for example in Twinkle Little, Twinkle Little Star, the first bar would just have no rests. Um, yes, because it's all quarter notes. Right, so you'd have four quarter notes. Here you'd have uh, two quarter notes and a half note, but then you would still need to write in a quarter note rest here for tone to work correctly. That's kind of the difference. OK. OK. OK, so if we want to write a sequence uh, that has a no not just a note, but a note and a duration, we need to use a different type of data. We can't just put in either a string or a null here. Um, so let's comment out this sequence and write a new one. And there's different ways to do this. Um, you could use an array with the first element being the note and the second element being the duration. Uh, if you want it to be more efficient, 
programmatically, that's probably how you would do it. But if you want it to be easier to read, which is what we're going to go for now, you can use an object. So we're going to use objects like we talked about um, either last week or two weeks ago again. Uh, to create a little object for each one of our notes that contains the note and the duration. So I'm still going to use a list, and I'm still going to use elements in the list, but it's going to be a little more complex. So I'm going to do each item in my list on a different line. And each item in the list is going to be a new note. And so it's going to be a new object. So I'll put an object and a comma, object and a comma, object, comma, object comma, and then I'll fill in the values I want here. So each one of these objects is going to contain both the note I want to play and the duration I want the note to play for. So let's start with the note. We'll start with C4 as the first note. And then the duration, we can say, um, or actually, I don't, I don't want to use duration because duration is a P5 variable. So let's use a shorthand for this use dur shorthand for duration um, so my first note let's play for one uh, for a half note um, so we'll say 2n uh, so if i play a half note here remember that my next three notes for me to hear this entire note are going to have to be um, rests so if we look here uh, if i have a half note um, Where's my half note? Here's my half note. I need one, two, three rests. So for an eighth note, I don't need a rest afterwards, but I can put a rest. For my quarter note, I need one eighth note rest. For half note, I need three eighth note rests. And if I had a whole note, then I would need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rests. Um, so we'll keep that in mind for later. So if I have a, uh, a half note here, then my next note is going to need to be a null. So we'll say null is null, and duration is 8n. And the duration of the rests is always going to be whatever the lowest duration is. So right now, our loop is running at, eight, at quarter notes. Um, if we did something lower than that, uh, like 16th notes, or if we made something higher, like a like a fourth uh, quarter note, then that would be kind of like our basis for what our melody is at. So whatever the smallest division is, is kind of half, how we have to work here. Um, but if you screw this up, it's not going to be the end of the world. It'll just change how your melody sounds. Um, so let's do a couple more of these. But why are you writing eighth notes? Um, that's, put the notes and it'd be easier to instead of like writing three more three notes you just write one note if you write in quarter note yeah um that's true <laughs> but using eighth notes gives me a lot more variety if i'm just using quarter notes it's probably going to sound like twinkle little twinkle twinkle little star <laughs> whereas if i use eighth notes i'll get something i'll be able to have a little bit more um variety rhythmically uh, so it, it's up to you. It's just a choice that I made. You can you can make it whatever you prefer. Um, so we have our half note. Uh, it has to be the same as uh, as your bass. Uh, what the bit? So your rests are are gonna have to be the same as your bass. Uh, uh, what you? Call? Yes. I mean, if you want it to work the way that I'm setting it up, that's the case. If you're if if you don't, it'll still play something. It'll just it just won't be in an even uh, time signature. Um, so let's play a quarter note next. We'll put in our E four here, and so we've got for a quarter note, we need one rest following the note. So we'll do one eighth note rest. And then we'll finish our uh, melody with two uh, D4s. And these do not need to have rests because they're going to be eighth notes. So I'm just going to copy this a couple times and uh, do D4 here. OK. 
so now we have to modify our loop code a little bit to play the sequence correctly. Um, so let's go down here. And so now the note, the sequence that we get out of here is no longer just the note. It's the object that contains the note and the duration. So there's an easy way to get these values out. We can use something called destructuring, where I'm going to make something that looks like the object over here. I'm going to say note comma duration and assign it to the object at sequence at index. Uh, so this is just a quick way of getting those values out of this object at the sequence. So this sequence at index is pointing to this first object here. And so I'm just getting the note and the duration as two variables, note and duration, that I can use inside of my loop. So this is called destructuring. Uh, when you do this with an object, you're basically just making something that looks similar to the objects. This only works if we want these variable names to be the same. Um, and so after I do that, all I have to do is replace my quarter note here with the duration variable that I've got from destructuring. So let's run this again, see how this sounds. <laughs> So we have a similar thing, but now we have uh, some rests in between. So I'm going to make a couple of variations to this to show you uh, to show a little bit about what will happen if we change different things. So for example, if we take out some of these rests, let's say I take out all of these rests here. So even though we're telling tone to play this C4 for the duration 2n, since we're not playing no, like these rests after it, it's actually just going to skip right to this second note uh, without waiting. So let's listen to that. So uh, if we add in a rest back in, then it'll wait for the length of one rest. And if we add another rest back in, we'll hear a slightly longer delay. And then our last rest. And another thing I can change is for this note, we're playing it for a half note. So it plays the whole time until we get to the E4. But we don't have to play it the whole time. If I just played this an eighth note, it'll just play a short duration, and we'll still have the same rests here. So you might prefer the sound of that. I could do the same thing with my quarter note. I could change this to an eighth note, and then I'll just have eighth notes. Then down here with these eighth notes, we're not really hearing the difference. They're kind of blending together. So I could even subdivide these. I could make these 16th notes so we can hear the attack of each one of those notes. So depending on what you're going for with your melody and your rhythm, those are, by adding in this duration, we have a lot more control over how long the note plays for, and if we wait, if we have a rest after that note plays, where the note can play over the rest, or uh, there's just nothing happening there. Um, so I'm going to leave this as is and go back to another uh, randomized version where we're going to have to change a couple things. So it's kind of contradiction because rest means nothing plays, even if there's a note. But if you play a second note, like a, yeah. a half note, it should be longer, but the rest like contradicts it because rest means nothing plays. So right. It's kind of contradictory to what you're writing and how it actually is supposed to, you know. Yeah. If you're thinking about it from the way that music is typically writ read and written, like a score, um, like if we look at a score here, uh, you wouldn't have 
Like for example, there's no rest here because this note is being played for that entire duration. So even though we know there's no new note here, there's no rest because this note covers this whole section. So that's when we're reading uh, music, but tone doesn't work like that. Tone is, is uh, on the computer. It's playing every eighth note, whether we want it to or not. And so if we don't want it to play there, we have to spe specify. So it's not necessarily, I, I don't know if I would think of it as a rest necessarily, um, but we're basically saying don't play anything here. Um, don't play a new note here. So sometimes when we put in a null value, it's it's still playing the previous note. Sometimes it's not playing anything. So it is a different way uh, of, it's not really written because nobody's gonna read this. It's our code. It's not like a score for other people to read, but it's just a different way of thinking about time than what we're used to when we're reading sheet music. Um, but I think unless you read sheet music all the time, it's not something that you probably uh, would. I mean, in drums, it will it would work kind of the same thing yeah. because you can't play a drum note for more than like either a quarter note or or eighth note or sixth note, depending on what and what your BPM is and what what the what's mm -hmm. your. And then so if you if you want to play like only one note during a four four bar you would just have like a quarter note and then just four three rests yeah if in drum sheet music at least right yeah i think yeah it is similar to drums in that you know with a there, i mean you can there's certain drums that do resonate over a longer period of time but most of the time it's a it's a short uh uh sound and then there's space afterwards um but you don't play it because when you hit a symbol you don't hit it again mm. it just keeps going but it's still only one hit right it's still you still have the rest for not playing anything else during it during the crash yeah yeah um yes okay so uh what, so last little bit we want to bring in some randomness again um next week we're going to look at more interesting ways to create uh generative melodies instead of just throwing in random notes uh, what we'll do is um, actually make an algorithm, a very simple algorithm to generate a melody. Uh, but for now, if we want to increase our sequence, uh, we don't have to, to, you know, we can keep the beginning, but let's add some stuff to the end. So now if we want to add a note to the sequence, we can't just add a note, we also need to add a duration. So let's bring back our uh, random note code. So we have um, our uh, for loop here. I starts at zero for I is less than eight, I plus plus, so we'll add eight random notes. The only thing that we have to change here is based on the duration that we get, um, we will want to add some rest. So if we add in a half note, we're going to have to add some rest afterwards to get it to sound the way that we expect it to. Um, so let's make a random duration function. So let's say constant uh, dir is get random duration. And this one's pretty easy. Uh, we'll just put this down here after our get random note. We'll say function get random duration. And we can use uh, a list of the durations that we want and just return a, a random one. So we'll say constant dir equals random, and we'll make a list of durations. I'll put it up at the top. So random durations, and then we'll just return that duration. So we'll get a random note and a random duration. Um, so let's make a list of durations. I'll put this with our other stuff, our notes and our octaves. So we'll say let durations equal, uh, so we'll use a whole note, a half note, a quarter note, and an eighth note. And again, you can use more notes than this. I'm just going to stick with this just to keep things simple. Um, so we'll get a random duration. And then instead of just pushing a note here, uh, we're going to have to make 
a note object. So let's say constant, um, let's just call this a beat. So a beat will be a combination of a note and a duration. So the beat will be a note and then comma duration. And so we can uh, create an object. If we want the same key uh, as the variable name here, then I don't have to say like note colon note the way I normally would. I can just put note and duration together. So this is kind of the opposite of our destructuring down here. We can use it on the other side as well. If we have a variable and uh, if we have two variables that we want to stick inside of an object, we can put them together uh, like this. And then we'll just say sequence.push our beat. And then after we do that, we need to check if we want to add some rests. So we'll have to know how many rests to add. So let's make a variable. So let's say let num rests equals zero. And I don't want to like, you know, just add a bunch of rests and repeat the same code over and over again. So what I'm going to do is figure out how many rests do I have to add. And then I'm going to use a loop to add those rests. And this will give us a good chance to uh, review nested for loops as well. So if I put a for loop while I'm already inside of a for loop, how do I write that? Um, so we'll figure out the number of rests we need. So we'll say if uh, dir is um, 1n, so if our duration is a whole note, then the number of rests we're going to need is 7, because there are 7 quarter notes after our whole note that we're going to want to put in there. Um, so else if our duration is a whole note or a half note, then the number of rests we want is just going to be three. And for our last one, else if our duration equals a quarter note, then the num rests is going to be just one. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't really make sense, don't worry too much about it. You can just uh, fork this code. And if you want to add more uh, durations besides the ones that we're using right now, you can, you can do that. And if you have questions about how to do that, we can go over it. Um, but so after we uh, put our note, we're going to have to add our rest. So I'm going to add another for loop. So if I have a loop inside of a loop, I can't use I again. So what I'm going to use instead is the next letter in the alphabet, J. Um, so J equals 0. Uh, J is less than the number of rests. And J plus plus. So we're just going to go through the number of rests, and we're just going to add a rest each time. Um, so I'm going to take my sequence and say dot push to add in a new element. Uh, and for this one, I'll just put it right in here. So I'll just write my object directly in here. So the null, the note is null, and the duration is our default eighth note. And let's print out our sequence after this so we can take a look at it. So let's say console.log and print out our sequence. And we're open up, we'll open up the console here. So, so if we look at our sequence, oh, it's going to play every time I click on here. Um, let's open this in a new tab so we can actually read this without triggering the uh, thing itself. OK, so here's our sequence here. So it starts with the ones that we wrote, C4, E4, D4. But then we see some random uh, notes. So we have a note G4, duration is 4n. And so it's followed by one rest, which is the correct uh, thing that we want. Um, then we have C3, it's a whole note, followed by seven rests. G3 is an eighth note, 
and so it goes right to B4. It's a quarter note. So it looks like this is pretty much working. Um, one thing that we didn't add uh, that we sh could technically add in here um, to our notes is that we could technically add a null. Uh, the problem is that all of our notes are a, um, a letter plus a number, so the note number plus the octave. So if we wanted to add a null, uh, we'd have to come up with a, with a clever way to do that. Um, I'm going to ignore that for now. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But we could have a we could add rests on their own without necessarily having them uh, react to other notes. Um, but anyway, let's play this and see how it sounds. <laughs> So there's a couple of things that I would probably change after listening to that. Like we don't necessarily always want to have uh, an, a quarter, like a, I think actually I would just probably add more rests in. So hmm. I'm not going to worry about that now. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. But one thing I do want to point out, let's listen to it again. <laughs> So even though we might not call that like a great melody, we do recognize that it repeats. And that's kind of the first part of creating a melody. Um, making a good melody requires considering rules for what makes a melody sound good or bad. And right now we're not really doing that because we're just throwing random notes. And so that's the main thing that we're going to talk about um, next week and is a big topic in generally in programming and if you you know in it in, when you're learning programming at first you're just learning like this is how a variable works this is how a function works etc cetera, etc cetera. and you're just kind of like figuring out how to do the basic stuff but when you're when you start to it to get those basics down where programming really goes is towards uh creating uh algorithms that do things on their own without us kind of like planning everything in advance and so learning some algorithms uh, is a is kind of like the next step in terms of like going from just learning the basics to understanding how computers actually work and what programming is really used for. So we're not going to spend a ton of, it's not going to be like the craziest algorithm ever, but what I want to do is write a very simple, a simple algorithm that will generate a melody. Um, that way we'll understand a little bit more about how we can tell a computer to make choices and do something beyond just like throwing a bunch of random numbers and durations out there. And so we'll talk a little bit about how that works and um, make some rules for creating a melody that sounds a little bit better. It's not going to sound amazing, but it's going to sound a little bit better than the pretty much random stuff that we are uh, generating right now. Um, so that's what we'll do uh, next week. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of continue from there. Um, so let me stop recording and then uh, we can do questions and stuff.